So in the last couple of weeks, we've actually been able to get out and do some street photography again. It's been amazing since being locked down for so long and not being able to get out of my camera and explore the streets. It's been driving me nuts. So uh, last week I went to Bristol, did my first street uh, return to street photography in Bristol. Fantastic day, so if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up there too, so you can click on that video. Um, but this week, I was actually fortunate enough to be booked for my first ever uh, street photography one-to-one -one workshop. Um, really, really excited. I, um, I've obviously done a few um, sort of photo walks, which you guys who've followed the channel for a while might might have seen. So meeting up with about 10 or 15 random photographers is just a, just a casual wander around, but it's a bit different when it's a one-to-one -one and that person's paying you because obviously they, they've, 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 uh, they're have they've investing in you to give them something from the day. So a bit different, but I've done a few landscape photography workshops, so I kind of had an idea what to expect. Uh, but yeah, really, really excited to do my first street photography workshop. So I met up with a guy called Stuart in Gloucester. Now, I'm not sure if Gloucester's a city or a town, so I'll have to check that out. Um, but it was a, it's got a cathedral, so it should be a city, I guess. Um, beautiful, beautiful, quirky uh, town, and I'd never been, I'd never been there before. But I knew it was sort of famous for its um, old-fashioned buildings, old alleyways, and cobbled stones and stuff like that. So I was looking forward to it. Um, so I met Stuart in Gloucester, and we met in a coffee shop. Um, had a bit of breakfast and discussed what his strengths and weaknesses were as far as street photography. So thankfully for me, he knew exactly how to use a camera. He knew everything about um, the exposure triangle. He knew what, uh, how to expose to the right. He knew how to use his histogram. Um, he knew uh, about depth of field. He knew about um, apertures and shutter speed and everything like that. So with Stuart, it was, all, it was just a case of confidence. Um, and it was a big, big deal for him. It was a tremendous deal for him. So we discussed a few ways that we could get around um, his, uh, his confidence of walking around with the camera and street photography. Now this is something that you might feel the same way about, like street photography sounds like an ideal thing to do, but having the confidence to actually put the camera in your hand and walk around a city centre, uh, and, and perhaps due to fear of um, confrontation, I don't know. So uh, yeah, it was an interesting day. Now, a few of the things that we went through in the coffee shop that he had a list. <laughs> so we're, obviously with a, with a workshop, it's always, always important to, especially one-to-one, -one, is to work out what it is that person needs. So we went through his list. He was very organized and brought, uh, brought a list with him of the things that he was trying to get from the day. So we wanted to work out how to approach street photography, get more confident, as I said. Um, he wanted to know how to find a composition, what to look for, um, how to keep things simple, um, we were looking at pre-visualizing a photograph, so how can you see a photograph without even having to take the photograph and then realize that you've, you've got all the wrong ingredients in there and you've got to crop the life out of it, so how to pre-visualize a scene. Um, um, another one of Stuart's weaknesses was editing, because he wasn't, he, he had no experience really with, with um, Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One or any of these editing profiles, and um, editing platforms, should I say. So what we did was we were both shooting Fuji. He had his X-T200 camera, which I'd never seen before, um, with a 23mm prime, which is a 35mm equivalent. So exact, we were shooting with exactly the same field of view as I was with my X100V. So that made it really, really easy. Now, um, I don't know why. I think he'd recently bought the camera. He'd bought the prime. He'd bought a 50 f2, and he obviously bought the kit lens that came with the camera. But he was keen to stick with a prime lens, which made teaching street photography a lot easier uh, because obviously you're not faffing around with different zooms and different uh, things to potentially look for. You could just keep your camera as simple as possible. So we agreed on that. We were, we were both starting off on the same foot. So that was really, really good. Um, so the first thing we needed to do was get out of the coffee shop and buy a brolly. It was absolutely throwing it down. It was from about 10 o'clock in the morning when I met him till three o'clock in the afternoon, it threw it down. So. What I said was, is on the way to do any street photography, I always look for, or landscape photography, I'm always assessing the, the environment, the, the weather, um, trying to predict what sort of images I'm likely to come away with so I can work out, you know, try and adjust my way of thinking as to what gear I might need. Um, obviously with street photography, it might be just an umbrella. Um, but because it was he so heavy rain, we actually discussed the things that the strengths that you could get from a heavy rain shoot. So things like umbrellas, things like puddles, things like strong reflections, things like people getting soaked. So with that in mind, we just decided to head out and give ourselves um, a challenge per hour. So we'd look for reflections initially. We'd look for alleyways. I mean, Gloucester is fortunate to have some amazing um, old old buildings, Tudor buildings. I think they are. So they're gorgeous. All 
crooked and rickety buildings. So really, really nice cobblestone uh, alleyway. So very, very easy to get out of the rain and obviously just get some confidence with the cameras, set the cameras up, understand what we're doing with the cameras, make sure that we've got the cameras all set up in advance. So uh, left the coffee shop, got the, got the umbrellas. I got uh, the biggest umbrella that I could find in any shop. It was massive um, and it, <laughs> clumsy thing. And I hate umbrellas, absolutely hate umbrellas. But waterproof coat, uh, is going to protect me but not the camera so as much as i i do appreciate that the x100v is weather sealed uh, stewart's x xt200 isn't weather sealed so we just decided to use my camera initially now that wasn't um, intentional because i think stewart was so nervous about getting his camera out straight away that i was helping him find shots without a camera so just sort of standing here saying right there's a there's a great comp a composition here there's a good opportunity now look at this person coming towards us what you know trying to see things without even having his camera in his hand so when we did find a composition it was literally a case of me saying right Stuart, here's my camera take that photograph because he was really he needed a push um but yeah, when we when we when we got into the swing of things, and he was well, obviously I was I felt a lot more confident that he was using my camera in in light rain. <laughs> Don't want to kill a client's camera on a on a one to on a one to one. So yeah, it, it was good. We got the weather sealing kit on. The Fuji still haven't sent me my um, my weather sealing kit, so I've got a Hoya um, a UV filter and a, and a, a DAP filter holder on there as well. So this is semi. I never ever trust the camera fully to be weather sealed, but I think we did fine having this in in the rain and stuff like that. And the the the, the, the opportunity, the, the moments that we were in the rain, I think it did all right. So no issues with it whatsoever. But yeah, I'm always nervous about having a camera in the rain. I don't fully trust the weather sealing. Um, but it was really really good. We we wandered around, looked for some alleyways. We found a bus a bus station, which I'd done some research before going to Gloucester and seen this amazing architecture. Really really cool bus station. Lovely lovely lines. Obviously it's dry. So if we needed to get out of the rain and just um, discuss composition, discuss camera techniques, discuss the way you're setting it up. Um, obviously, if you go from outside a building to inside a building, the exposure is going to change. So discussing how the depth of field is going to change at different apertures, that sort of thing. So the bus station was really handy, um, but it also meant that we could try and find some cool reflections um, and wait for people to... to we basically assess a scene. So we were looking at a scene and think, right, really, really like this scene. It's nice and modern, clean lines. Um, we're not necessarily out of our comfort zone because we, you know, we've still got people coming around, but we're not in our, in their faces. So Stuart was a lot more happy with that, and um, it was a good step up the ladder towards towards um, approaching people. Um, but the bus station was really really cool. After that, we went to a government building. We didn't know it was a government building, but directly opposite the bus station in Gloucester is this really cool, I'd say about 70s or 80s sort of art nouveau looking retro looking building uh, but amazing amazing lines and, and um, it was a black and white kind of entrance way to this building and um, really really like the, the black and the white so we'd set the camera up and initially to shoot black and white um, just to keep the photograph simple just to look for black and white photographs so this was a really really good um, location because it was literally just black and white nice nice lines so what we did is obviously it's cheating but just to get um, an idea of the sort of how we could compose the shots we took it in turns walking through the scene um, just to see if we could get um, the composition right and then obviously we were the human element so not technically street photography because it was because we were the subject so it was staged but um, it was a good way of Stuart getting used to positioning the camera getting the lines right getting the composition right looking for crucially looking at an image on the back of the camera say right what do I like what don't I like and trying to work out how we can improve the shot so um, yeah that was really interesting until we got asked to leave we got told by the security to come in and uh, carry a business card if you can or something because um, yeah I, I left a business card with security because they were trying to inform the police <laughs> we didn't know it was a government building but they were lovely people anyway in there so uh, that was all dealt with absolutely no worries and Stuart uh, even though he um, obviously obviously was worried about his confidence behaved perfectly and, and didn't have any issues with the people coming up and talking to us so that was a really really good i think a lesson learned in street photography as well how people can sometimes come up and approach you but he had no issues with that whatsoever so we discussed zone focus that's a really really important thing i think for learning street photography uh, put your camera in, mocal, mo in manual focus sorry um, and then decide whether it, obviously we were shooting f8 or 5.6 when we went indoors 
So we were deciding whether to focus at two meters in front of the camera or infinity away from the camera. And then we were just using those two zones to assess which, which would suit the scene better. So if we thought somebody was gonna walk in front of the camera and think, oh, this is an interesting person, put the camera to, um, interesting enough, we couldn't get the back button focus to work on his X-T200. So if anybody knows if that's possible, let me know. Um, so we were using the, the digital gauge on the back of his screen, massive screen on that thing. Um, and then putting it to two meters, wait for somebody to come past, and then he would snap it away. That worked fine, no issues at all. So towards the end of the workshop, we actually we were looking at a scene and he'd already figured out whether or not he was gonna be focused at infinity or focused at two meters in front of the camera. So that worked really, really well. And I was surprised how quick he took to that because I think, I can't remember now, but I think he's an automatic focuser normally. But that was a really, really good transition anyway. So uh, yeah, definitely makes, I said to him, when we first started, I should have mentioned this earlier, when we first started, it's dead important, set your camera up, so get the exposure right, think about what's important to the shot, so is it is it depth of field, is it shutter speed, what is it, if you're trying to blur, if you're trying to freeze, you're trying to get depth, what is it, set your camera up in advance, and then wander around, knowing that your camera only needs to be focused at two meters or infinity. So we've done that, F8, I think we were F8, 500, about 1600 ISO. So absolutely no worries, keeping an eye on the histogram, Brilliant, no, no issues whatsoever. So that went really, really well. Um, and um, yeah, obviously don't chimp. I was, I was, I was tr very, very much aware that he was taking a picture and, and wanted, as we all did, you know, we all, and I still do. You know, it's a, it's a bad habit, but it's a difficult one to get away from. So definitely avoid chimping because you know that as soon as you look at the camera, something more interesting will happen and you'll have missed the shot through looking at the back of your camera. So uh, yeah, so it was good, a really, really good day. I was super, super pleased. Um, the highlight of the day definitely for Stuart was I'd uh, nipped to the loo <laughs> in the um, strange highlight in the shopping centre at the end about four o'clock and he, when I came out of the toilet, he was sort of standing in the main corridor of this um, shopping centre, I think they call it the Keys or something like that in, um, in Gloucester by the docks with a big, big grin on his face like a Cheshire cat and I thought, what's up? And he, sh he showed me, he said, look at this. So he took a picture of this guy walking with a mask on in the shopping centre but the guy was literally about a metre and a half or two meters away from him and looking straight at him at the camera. So I said, I'll oh, explain you know, what, what drew you to the image. He says, well, I don't like the photograph. <laughs> it's not an amazing image, but the fact that he was actually able to see this guy coming towards him, and actually take the shot, put the camera to his eye and take the shot was a massive, massive deal. So if nothing else, if none of the pictures came out from that day, Stuart was very, very, very pleased to walk away having taken a candid image of somebody close up looking at the camera and me nowhere near him. So uh, yeah, really, really pleased. Well done, Stuart. That was a, that was a tremendous uh, highlight for the day. We did get some cool images. I'll show you them at the end of the video as well. So we took a few images, uh, quite a lot on my camera, a few, um, obviously more because we're using mine in the rain. Uh, but it was a really, really fun day and um, I, hopefully I can do more workshops and more. I've, I've, had, I've had a few bookings actually uh, for more group, sort of small group workshops and one-to-ones and stuff. So yeah, really, really, um, say first one, I was quite nervous, but it was damn good fun. Really, really, uh, really, really good character. And um, uh, he wrote a fantastic testimonial. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with a few quotes from that testimonial at the end of the, the video. Some of them are quite funny, but very, very cool chap. Thank you very much, Stuart, for having me down. Really, really appreciate you uh, getting me down there. It was a really, really good day. So if you are interested in a one-to-one -one or small group workshops, jump over to the website. I'll leave some details down below, but uh, say I will leave you with some of the pictures. I'm thrilled with how the workshop went and I'm even more thrilled that, work, uh, that Stuart managed to get the fundamental issues of his street photography weaknesses ticked so uh, yeah looking forward to seeing some of his images in future but anyway i'm gonna let, i'm gonna shut up i'm gonna let you guys carry on um but thank you so much for watching if you're not already a subscriber please do so because i've got some really exciting news that i can't wait to share um i've been going on about it for long enough and it's very 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 close to being public knowledge so yeah hopefully in the next couple of weeks everybody will know about it and you can all get involved it's something that i'm trying to build a community around so yeah if you are if you're not already on the street photography community website street photography creators website <laughs> on facebook uh, jump over and uh, check that out it's a really really growing community all about um, learning street photography critiquing people's images being polite and friendly uh, but it's also about understanding what street photography is because I think a lot of people have got a very um, open interpretation about what actual street photography is meant to be. Um, not that I'm going to put a name on it or anything like that, but um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good group and a lot of people are sharing some really, really insightful information. So yeah, do check that out. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.